Hello, welcome to chemistry and tool. So today we are going to speak about something which is very important for chemistry and that's coordination chemistry. Today we are going to learn about IUPAC nomenclature for coordination chemistry. Now what basically is IUPAC nomenclature? These are standard scientific names which are given to a compound and by which we recognize them. Now first of all with starting with IUPAC nomenclature you should very well know what do you mean by a complex compound. So let's start with a basic thing that's co complex compound. Now we all know there are metals which are capable of making dative bond due to the orbitals which are present in them. Let us say I have got such a metal which is in some oxidation state. I don't know what is the oxidation state. It can be plus 2, it can be plus 3, it can be plus 4 or it can be in a neutral oxidation state. That's 0. Now, it can never be negative. Metals do not have a negative oxidation state. Usually D and F block elements. Now, let us say this metal is making a coordinate bond with something which is L. Let us say this L stands for a ligand. Something which makes a dative bond is called as a ligand. Let us say this metal is making a bond with ligand 1. Also, there can be another ligand, let us say ligand 2. Now, ligand 1 can be present x times and ligand 2 can be present y times. This thing which is present over here will be called as a complex and it is written in a square bracket. So, we are ligand 1 and ligand 2 which are present x times and y times are making a dative or a coordinate bond with your metal which is present in an oxidation state which is which can be a positive or a neutral oxidation state. Now, these ligands are either neutral, these ligands are either positively charged, these ligands are either negatively charged. Depending upon the oxidation state or the type of ligand the and also the oxidation state of metal, the overall oxidation state or the overall charge on the molecule will depend upon the oxidation state of metal as well as the oxidation states of ligand. For example, let us say my ligand 1 is having minus 1 oxidation state. My ligand 2 is also ha having a minus 1 oxidation state or I, I can say that they are an anionic ligands. For example, chloride minus, cyanide minus or you can say fluorine minus. So these are the ligands which will be having a minus 1 negative charge. Let us say ligand 1 is present twice and as well as ligand 2 is present twice. Now depending upon the oxidation state of metal, the overall charge present on the metal can be decided. For example, let us say your metal has got a plus 4 oxidation state. So the overall oxidation, overall negative charge because of these two ligands will be, this will be minus 2 because there are two ligands. This will be again going to be minus 2 because there are two ligands. So minus 2 minus 2 will give you minus 4. So minus 4 is because of two ligands. And since my metal is in plus 4 oxidation state, the overall oxidation state on metal comes out to be 0. So I can say this molecule is completely neutral. Such type of complexes will be called as neutral complexes. Am I correct? Similarly, what you can have is let us say my metal will be having a plus 2 oxidation state. Since my metal is having plus 2 oxidation state and the overall oxidation because of ligands comes out to be minus 4, the remainder is minus 2. So your complex will be having minus 2 oxidation state and hence this type of ligands will be called as, this type of complexes will be called as anionic complexes since they are having a negative charge on them. For example, let us say another example, I, my metal has got a plus 6 oxidation state. And since your ligands contribute minus 4, your metal has got plus 6 oxidation state, the overall comes out to be plus 2. Such type of complexes, complexes where you have got a positive oxidation state will be called as your cationic complexes. So your complexes can be a neutral complex, an ionic complex or a cationic complex. I can write them down like this. Let us say you have got a metal, you have got a ligand which can be present x times and this metal complex has got a zero oxidation state. So it will be called as a neutral let us say your metal has got a ligand which is present x times. There is a positive plus 2 oxidation state. Let us say positive of plus 2 oxidation state. This will be called as your cationic complexes. Let us say your metal has got a ligand which is present x times and it has got a minus 2 oxidation state. Such type of complexes will be called as anionic complexes. Now, since these complexes, these two complexes are charged complexes, there has to be a counter ion to stabilize them. For cationic complexes, since your first part is positive, there has to be a negative, someone negative, which will stabilize this positive, positive complex. Similarly, over here, since your complex is negatively charged, there has to be someone which will be stabilizing this. Now, the next question comes about, uh, okay, one more thing. The something which is stabilizing your complex will be called as a counter ion. So it is very important to know that counter ions are present. Now counter ion can be a positively charged species or counter ion can be a negatively charged species depending upon the complex which is present. If a complex is cationic, counter ion will be anionic. If your complex is anionic, the counter ion will be cationic. Now, how to name them? 
nomenclature is very important now the thumb rule says that whenever you are writing a name of any ionic compound positive should be named first and negative should be named later on for example you have got nacl now whenever we see nacl we never say cl na we always say nacl that's because na over here is positively charged cl over here is negatively charged it comes out to be sodium chloride and not chloride sodium so the rule says that always write the name of positive first and then write the name of negative Similarly over here while naming them we will try to write the name of positive first and the name of negative first Now it doesn't matter whether your counter ion is positive or your complex is positive The nomenclature will be very simple when you start with an cationic complex since over here your complex is positively charged the complex should be named first So it will be the name of complex first the name of complex followed by the name of counter ion followed by the name of counter now since your complex is carrying a metal as well as your ligand the nomenclature rule says that write down the name of ligand first followed by the name of metal and followed by the name of your counter ion so this is a very simple rule the rule changes a bit the rule is quite different for an anionic ligand the rule over here says that since my counter ion is positively charged over here write the name of your counter ion followed by the name of your complex since over here your complex has got a negative charge the only difference over here is now you will be writing the name of a complex which will obviously begin with a ligand as there is a ligand present over there the basic difference over here will be in the nomenclature of the name of metal whatever be the metal since your metal is a part of a negative part is a part of a negative part or i can say it's an anionic complex the metal name should end with 8 for example copper will become cuprate zinc will become zincate iron will be become ferrite i hope you got it so let us start with few examples of this nomenclature i hope you are comfortable with complexes i hope you can understand what do you mean by the square bracket i hope you can understand what do you mean by this thing which will be written outside the complex that's called as a counter ion so let us start with some examples of iupac nomenclature So till now you have understood that complexes are of three type either it can be a neutral complex it can be a positive that is cationic complex or it can be a negative that is anionic complex so now let we start with the nomenclature how to write a iupac name of that complexes let us start with the neutral coordination spheres now i have taken few examples over here so the first one will be neutral coordination sphere that means your coordination compound or your complex compound will be having no charge it will be a neutral complex the first example will be platinum which is coordinated with the help of ethylene diamine that's two time and chloride ion that's two time so what will be the name so since my platinum Platinum over here will be having some uh, oxidation state, and ethylene diamine is one of my ligand, and chloride is one of my ligand. So we'll be starting with the name, and the name nomenclature will be dichloro bis ethylene diamine platinum two times, and you know this is the oxidation state that our metal has got. Now why bis over here? The the main point over here is now since chloride was two times, I will be writing dichloro. Now since ethylene diamine has itself got di. so di is itself in the name of your ligand so you will be as using the uh, prefixes like bis tris tetrakis pentakis so this will be dichloro bis ethylene diamine platinum 2 always remember you need to write the oxidation state of your metal that should be in a roman letters and that should be in your bracket The next complex that we have got will be Hg, coordinated with the help of CH3, that is one times. You have got a chloride ion, that is also one time. Now, what will be the nomenclature for this compound? It will be chloro methyl mercury two. Chloro methyl mercury two. Now, how how you can see? Since my complex is neutral, and since I know chloride is a negative ligand, and also I know my methyl is also a negative ligand. So this will be minus one minus one that gives you minus two. So your mercury has to be plus two in order to get a neutral oxidation state over here. That's zero oxidation state over here. Now writing the name of a complex first, you need to remember that write the name of your ligand first. Now I have got two ligands over here. One will be chloride, another will be methyl. Now how to name them? So go with alphabet. Now since we know C comes first, so it will be chloro. Then M that will be methyl. Then it will be mercury. And you have got two that stands for oxidation state of your metal. Okay. The next will be RH in coordinate is coordinated with the help of NCS thrice and NH3 thrice. Now this is thiocyanide and this is ammonia that is also called as amine. Now first of all, since I know this is a neutral oxidation state and I know RH this is a zero 
oxidation state uh, ligand that has got no charge it's a neutral ligand and ncs minus is a negative ligand minus 1 since ncs is thrice so total overall it will be minus 3 so your rh has to be plus thrice so in order to get zero over here so what will be the name over here the name over here will be starting since i have got three ligand two ligands over here that will one is amine and other one is thiocyanate so the nomenclature will be starting first you need to write the name of your ligand so which will be the first ligand so obviously amine come first and then come thiocyanate so amine will be named first so it will be three times amine so try amine then it will be thiocyanate so Try thiocyanato. Now, since we know thiocyanide is a bidented ligand, it can coordinate with the help of nitrogen as well as it can coordinate with the help of sulfur. Since over here it is coordinating with the help of nitrogen, you have to specify over there that it is coordinating with the help of nitrogen. So that's why dash and dash. And again, your name of your metal that's rhodium and oxidation state of your metal that will be thrice. Okay, so these three examples are very good examples of neutral coordination sphere. The next will be cationic coordination sphere. That means one of your complex or your complex will be having a positive charge over here, net positive charge. So accordingly, you need to calculate what will be the oxidation state of your metal. So since I have got chloride over here, always start with the counter ion that will help you to find out the coordination oxidation state on your metal. Since there are three chlorine over here, and I know chlorine is a negative ligand, three chlorine means overall it will be minus three. So your coordination compound, your complex compound should have plus three over there. Am I correct? Now since this is plus three, ammonia is a neutral ligand. So please go through the list of ligands that I will be providing you at the end of this video. So ammonia will be a neutral ligand. So it will be zero. So that simply means the plus three oxidation state is only because of your cobalt. So your cobalt is in plus three oxidation state. Now let's start writing the name. Now as I told you already that always in writing the name of a compound the positive should be named first. So here we'll be writing the name of a positive and that my positive over here is nothing but your complex. So complex contains a ligand. So obviously writing the name of your positive things will be the first priority. Now while writing a complex your ligand should be named first. So over here it will be hexaamine hexaamine since it is a ligand hexaamine then it will be a cobalt cobalt with oxidation state of 3 okay so i'm done with my complex and that's a positive now you need to write the name of your uh, counter ion that comes out to be chloride always remember do not write the number of counter ions present over there it's only a simple chloride even though there are three chloride present over there you need to write only chloride Numbers hexa, tetra, penta, they are used only to specify the number of ligands present over there. The next over here will be a cobalt in coordinated with sulfate, amine and your counter ion will be nitrate over here. Now what will be the nomenclature? Again the same rule. Start with the positive things first and since I know nitrate is your negative ligand so it will be obviously minus 1 and if this is minus 1 it has to be plus 1. So the overall charge on your complex is plus 1. Now you need to specify what will be the charge on your compound. So for that you need to know your ligand will be 0 over here. Since it is ammonia it's a neutral ligand. Now comes out to be sulfate. Now since I know sulfate is a, is a ligand which has got minus 2 charge. So obviously it will be minus 2. Now what should be the oxidation state of your metal so that it comes out to be plus 1. So obviously your cobalt will be in plus 3 oxidation state. Plus 3 minus 2 left is plus 1. So it's plus 1. Your nitrate is your counter ion. Am I correct? Now what will be the nomenclature over here? Starting with the first, but that will be your positive thing and that comes out to be your complex. The first will be writing the name of your ligand. So ligand are amine and ligand are sulfate. So no doubt amine will be named first. So it will be tetraamine since A, tetraamine and then it will be sulfate. So it will be sulfato. Please go through the names of the ligand that I will be uh, supplying you at the end of this video where you can see what will be the names of your ligand if they are working as a ligand. For example, ammonia is written as amine, chlorine, chlorine is written as chloro. So I will be giving you that uh, details at the end of this video. So the name will be you have got tetraamine, you have got sulfato and then you have got cobalt cobalt and since the oxidation state on your cobalt will be 3 you have written is 3 and the counter ion comes out to be nitrate you have got nitrate over there so it's very simple the picture becomes complicated when your negative part is your complex i mean to say your complex has got a negative charge for example i have got k2 i have got copper i have got cyanide now this is an anionic coordination sphere what i mean by that I simply means if I have got K2 over here, so simply potassium is always plus 1 and I have got 2 times potassium, potassium over there, so this will be plus 2. So your complex should be having minus 2 charge. Now this, since your complex is having a minus 2 charge, it's an anionic coordination sphere complex. 
and since over here you see your complex was having a positive charge am i correct now writing the name of a complex which has got a negative charge is a bit different from this two so how it will be done so let us start writing with the name of positive stuff first because as we saw we are writing the name of a positive first and over here your positive is your counter ion so it will be potassium and we do not write the number of counter ion present so it will be potassium first of all now your negative part your negative part is your complex now the rule says while writing the name of a complex you should write the name of your ligand first so it will be tetra uh, it will be tetra sino so it will be tetra sino now at the end you have got metal now your metal is copper now always remember there's a thumb rule whenever writing the name of a metal which is present in a complex that has got a negative charge or i can say an anionic complex the name of your metal is modified and ate is added at the end so copper will become cuprate am i correct for example iron is known as ferrous it will become ferrate for example zinc will become zincate so this is also i'm going to give you at the end of this chapter the names of the metal that should be used when your complex is an anionic complex so what will be the name of this complex the name of this complex will be potassium tetracyno cuprate and it will be having minus 2 charge uh, that's that's plus 2 oxidation state since this is minus 2 your complex cyanide over here has is, is having a minus 1 charge there are four cyanide the overall it will be minus 4 and since it is minus 2 over there so it has to be plus 2 so that overall comes out to be minus 2 i hope this is the best way to find out the oxidation state of a metal am i correct the next complex will be k4 nickel coordinated with cyanide and c2o4 now the c2o4 is nothing but oxalate oxalate ion so what will be the name starting with the very first rule write the name of your positive first now positive over here will be k4 that's your counter ion so it will be k4 that comes out to be potassium writing the name of your complex that is a negative part so since this is k4 and potassium is minus one, plus one so it overall will be plus four am i correct your complex will be carrying a minus four charge am i correct now you need to find out the oxidation state present on nickel now very simple since i know cyanide cyanide is a negative ligand and there are two cyanides so the overall it will be minus two oxalato oxalato contain minus two oxidation state it's a it's a negative ligand that has got two minus charge so your oxalato is present over here two times and since oxalato carries two minus charge the overall it will be minus four am i correct so minus two minus four gives you minus six and overall over here that you have got is minus 4 so your nickel should be plus 2 plus 2 minus 2 gets cancelled remaining is minus 4 minus 4 goes there overall charge in the complex will be minus 4 minus 4 will be set stabilized by your counter ion that's your potassium four times now what will be the nomenclature over you writing first with the potassium that will be potassium then it will be the name of your complex okay complex now writing the name of your ligand first ligands are sino that's c oxalato that's o so obviously it will be c first so it will be potassium di sino di sino and then again it's oxalato di oxalato and then it will be nickel but you will not be writing nickel it will become nickelate since your complex contains a negative charge so it will be potassium di sino oxalato nickelate and the oxidation state present on your metal am i correct so this is how you can simply write the names of all the coordination compounds all the complexes that are given in your textbook as well as that will be appearing in your board exams I hope this video was useful. At the end of this video, what you can see right now is a list of the name of ligands. Also, the list of the names that should be used for the metal ion if your complex carry a negative charge.